Hi there, in your Jira service management project you might have noticed a new little thing in your tickets that is called playbooks. And I was thinking that if you are confused about that one or if you want to learn what it is, why not make a video for it? So this is the video for you, the way I will go through what playbooks currently is, how you can set it up and how you can work with it, and also a little bit of the restrictions or the, the limitations that it currently has. So let's jump into your service management and show you what we got. So here we are now in a Jira service management ticket in my demo project. And as you can say, this is the section I was referring to. So if you have this one in your Jira service management project today, and then this is what uh, we will look into. If you don't have it, it's either because you do not have the proper you don't have the license level for it. And I think this one is only available for premium. So if you don't have premium, you will not see this one yet. If you have premium and you don't see it, then you need to go back to the product settings. You need to go to features, and then you need to scroll down until you see this little icon with the checkbox here, and then you need to toggle it on. So if you toggle this one on or toggle it off, uh, then it will actually activate or deactivate this function, just like with any other items that you have. And once you have it activated, in product settings, you will have a new area called Playbooks, and it should be located under Automations. And if you go into Playbooks, you will have a little view that is, for those of you who are working a little bit with automations, you probably recognize the, the setup for this one. So you have your, uh, your Playbook tab, and you have your execution log that will show the activities that have happened in the different Playbooks. You have a search, so you can actually find the playbook that you want, or in this case, you will actually be able to search based on the playbook name. So you can actually find executions for specific playbooks uh, by searching by the name here. And you will also have a big blue button here that says create playbook. And this is the one that you need to do when you first get in here, because you won't have anything in here, it will be blank. In my case, I've created one just so I can show you uh, what you will see once you have one. So you will have the name for it. And if you click on this one, you will go into the edit mode and you can actually change the information about it. You'll see who owns this one. You will see which request type in this case. And we have three different levels where you can actually connect them and see who should I be able to see them. When should the playbook be visible? You can enable or disable just like you do in, uh, in, uh, with your automations. And for the actions today, you only have the delete function. So that's the only activity that you have. But like I said, when you first enter here, it will be blank. Uh, so let's go up and create uh, a new playbook for you so you can see what it looks like. And just like in automations, you will see that we have the different steps and triggers that will be on the side here. And then you have information about this step. Or up here, you can then go to the playbook details. And then you will actually be able to uh, set a little bit of information for the playbook itself. You can create the playbook. This is where you basically will save it, or you can return to the list. So since we are now in the playbook details, we can give this one a name. So let's call this playbook one, two, three, just because we need a name for it. Uh, so this is the first thing that we, we set for it, so we can actually find it. And then we need to decide who should be able to see this one. How should we visualize this one? So you can select three different things here. So you can then connect it to issue type, and then you can also connect it to, to uh, a specific issue type. So if you have an incident, for example, and you want to connect in a playbook to an incident, like an incident process, for example. So you have different steps of things that you always do for incident. You can do that. Or if you have, for example, a service request of some type, some type like an access or something like that, then you can connect that one. You can also have it on the request type. Uh, so you can actually have it even more granular. So for example, it's not just an incident. It is an email incident, for example, then you can have another playbook for that one. And the last one then is groups. So you can actually have it then for specific groups. So if you have a playbook for, let's see, I don't know, stakeholders or super admins, or you have a specific part of your organization that is working with the tickets in your GS service management desk, and then you can actually select this one. 
And you can also add conditions uh, so you can actually have it multiple ones. So for example, if it is a, an incident, so you have a request type here, for example, that is email request, a stupid example, but I haven't configured this one, but you can, you understand it properly. And then I can actually say group and I can have then, I don't know what I should have, your service management customer or whatever I want. So we can actually have multiple levels of this one. So you can granulize it uh, as much as you like. In this case, I will just have it for issue type, for all issue types, and I will not have any groups for it or any other things for it. So now I defined when should this one show up and also for whom should see it. So now I can go over then to, uh, to the playbook itself, and it starts with name this step. And out of the box today, you have basically two options that you can make for new playbooks. The first thing we can have then is we can just use step one and we can select between an instruction uh, which is basically a checklist so you have some information in there and then people just check that they have done that or you can have an automation rule and that one needs to have a manual trigger so you can manually trigger this one from the playbook so let's start with an instruction and then we can just write anything here and i just want to make sure that you are aware because this one looked a little bit weird here. So if I, I just type in a bunch of things here, and I'm just going to copy paste this one so we can see that we, we get a lot of this. Let's see how much I need to add before we see. Yeah, so now they are actually increased. It used to be 500 characters. Now it's 1000. But just so you know, you cannot input as much as you want here. And Last time I checked, you cannot include smart links here either. Otherwise, that would be awesome. But this is where you can now add a little bit of text. So maybe we can just do, let's see how many is a thousand like that. There we go. Now we have an instruction for that one. Uh, and this one, obviously you should have a little bit more, I should put it useful text and then I just put it in here, but this is just for illustration purposes. You can input anything you want. And like you can see here, you can have a bunch of things here. So you can have tables, for example, and you can have information panels. You can have, I don't know what you want to have. Expands could be good for certain things, but you do, you're quite limited to the amount of text that you can put in here. But dates could be good, statuses can be good. Emojis, of course, uh, you have your links, you have your action items, your list items, colors, you can have all your formatting, and you can do headings and stuff like that. You can just put something under here and just do it bold, and maybe do, uh, I don't know, inverted here, oh, sorry, italic, like so. And then I have my first step there. And in my second step, I can actually put an automation rule. And what happens then is you will actually get a list of all automations that is connected to your product that have a manual trigger. So in this case, I have one that's manually commenting and closing the ticket. So I can add this one here. And then I can also add the description here. So I can add this one. Like so. And I can delete this one. So we have step one and step two. Uh, we can continue to build this one as many as we want. And we can copy also one that already exists if you want. Maybe I can copy this one a few times, like so. And then I can also drag it and place it uh, below here if I want. Now I have a little playlist here. Now I can, can uh, then create this playbook. like so and if i want to update it i don't know why i clicked it twice but you don't need to do that so now i have a playbook here and i can see all the things that i have in it and if i go now then to my ticket here again so if i take my example ticket here again i will see that in the playbooks here uh, i will now have two because i have now selected this one to be shown on all issue types so it will always show up here. And I can see that I have one then that is connected to the playbook one, two, three, and it has five steps. So what it looks like when you open it is then that you will have 
first of all, you will have two tabs here. And so the first one is the steps. So you can actually see the steps that you should take. And you have this little mark is done on the side. This is how you verify that you have done one of the steps in the playbook. So if I click on this one, let's first check on this one. The execution logs will show all activities. And this one is blank when you start, obviously, because no one have done anything. And if I click mark this one as done, you will see that it's done and you will see who did it and when. This one will also show up now in the execution log. And also if you go to the playbooks, it will now be in the global one as well. So we can check that one after we have completed this one. So what I do is just, uh, I can just uh, go through this. And just for the purpose, I will just do all these one first. And now we're done all the steps, but I have the automation here. So if I click on this one now, I will actually do the same as if I go up here to actions and I will run the comment and close uh, automation. But I have it in the playbook here. So if I click on this one, now I will actually get, I actually had uh, for this purpose, I actually have uh, an input uh, for the automation as well. So I can actually have a value here. So I will choose option three. I don't know what that one is. I don't remember. Uh, and then this one will now cycle through. You will see that it is in progress while it is actually doing things. And I don't think this one will actually update. So you can see here that we had, we have output now a comment for this one. And we have the option three that I selected. And let's see if I refresh this page. It has changed now and closed. Now it hasn't closed, so it was probably a mistake for me in the automation. It should have closed this one as well. But you can see now in the in the playbook, you can now see four or five steps has been done. This one had a failure. Maybe this was a good thing. Maybe I can pretend that I was smart enough to actually show you what happens if this one fails. But you will have it now in the execution logs as well, and you will see that it had a failure. So let me just go check to see what kind of mistake I made in the automation first. So let's see, this is the one that I had. So let me just check the audit log and see what kind of mistake was happening. Uh, okay, it was in a status that it couldn't transition to. So let me just check that one in the workflow. So it needs to be in that one, I assume. Now we can actually mark it as done. So let's see then what happens if I run the playbook again. So now it is still here, still available. It failed last time, so now we can try to run it again. Let's do option two this time then, because it was spelled incorrectly. And now it will say that it's in progress. And now you can see it will actually update there and you should have a new comment here with the option two. So in that way, we can actually now then have a full list here so I can see what the output is. And I, it's still in progress here. So maybe I need to reload that one too. And now it says five, five steps. So I, I wish that they had a little bit of an Ajax here. So when, when things actually do things and it's connected to this one, it could update this screen as well. But you only have to refresh it and then you can see that everything has worked here. So you can see you had a failure here and you have a success here. So this is how playbooks work. And like I said, if you go back to the playbooks, Then you can also see the full automation log here. So you will see we have the same failure here and you will see that, that these ones are now for playbook one, two, three. If I search by demo here, you will see that I'm now filtering on this one. And the same thing if I choose one, two, three here, then it will select. So it, it is a smart search here. It will, will actually fetch uh, or, or find the information based on partial naming. So this is how uh, playbooks work at the moment. And what I would have liked, and let me just double check so they haven't added it because I haven't checked this one in a couple of weeks. 
So if I create a new rule here, I just want to see that we don't have playbooks here. No, we do not have anything related to playbooks. So one of the downsides of this one is that you cannot assign playbooks or, or, or connect playbooks based on automation rules at this point. So this would be great if, there, for example, you have the situation, I would like to have a specific playbook if it is a, an incident related to email and it has a priority of one or two, for example, then I want a playbook, a specific playbook to come in. Or I want to have this based on component or service. So if this is one of the business critical tools, I want to have a specific playbook for how I communicate with the stakeholders, for example, for that specific use case. Uh, so that one does not exist yet. But I think uh, overall playbooks, it is a very good addition and I, I really like the, uh, the fact that this one has been added because this is basically what we have tried to solve before by, by either having a plugin with checklist or we have, we have created these, these task lists for ourselves. So we basically done these, right? And then we'll check this one when we have completed them just to be able to have some kind of playlist or we have connected it to Confluence uh, to then like this, these are the instructions that you have for it. But it has never been possible to actually save it uh, like you have now. Now you actually can see, did we actually do these steps? And if so, who did it? Who actually confirmed that we have done these steps? That is very powerful, especially if you are now moving into areas like HR or finance, where audit trails is very important. So if people need to know who took a decision or who made sure that we had documentation done and where, where are different things logged and all these kind of things can now be in a playbook. We can see, did, when we got an incident for a financial system, how did we proceed with this one? Did we follow the process steps that is defined in ISO, for example, uh, or another uh, process that we, we need to have? I think this one is uh, quite lightweight yet. Uh, so this one can be uh, evolved quite a bit. I would like to be able to put this one with automations so I can actually publish this one a little bit more. And I also would like to, um, because uh, let me just check to see, uh, because this one is not very visible and it's collapsed by default. So just like forms have this problem that it's a little bit too difficult to actually see uh, that it has been added. I would like to be able to move it around a little bit and possibly make this one a little bit more visible. Because you have a lot of objects here that are like similar requests. And uh, if you have change management, you have other boxes here. So it actually can be a little bit difficult to find it. Uh, so I would like to be able to put it perhaps alongside description or put it in a separate tab or something like that. So it could be clear that we have it. And also I like to have and the markup here. Now it's new because it's a new function, but it would be nice to be able to see that, for example, another playbook has been added here. We're having some kind of toggle that is always open, and so you can always see it. But overall, this is an amazing new functionality that I really, really like. And I hope that you will enjoy it too, and that you will find good use for it. And so that was kind of the purpose for this one. And if you have any questions about playbooks or if you want to uh, figure out how you can do different automations that you can use to benefit uh, from this playbook, then just add a comment and I will try to answer as quickly as I can. And I guess with that, the only thing that remains for me to say is the same thing as I always say then. I hope that you will have a great day and also a week.